We heard, um, I believe it was Leslie who mentioned one thing that's really standing out off the field and even on is you're, you're far more vocal. Is that something that was a, a conscious effort this season or, or what, what has brought that about? Yeah, it's definitely on my mind a little bit more. Um, just trying to take that next step in my game. Um, just looking to improve. It helps me out and it helps the team out as well. So anything I can do for that is, is what I'm going to do. Yeah, I'm making that nervous, man. <laughs> Uh, you just gotta talk more. I think. <laughs> I mean, if you have any other ways? <laughs> I'd be glad to hear. You just flip the switch. I mean, what, what just gotta flip the switch. Yeah. So what? Why weren't you as vocal earlier in your career here? I'm not too sure. You know, it's a new year. Um, new you. New me. Does any of it have to do with not the actual dollar amount, but the years and knowing with the new contract you're, you're going to be here a little longer? No, nah, I'm not really thinking about that. It's just I'm having fun. Um, we're playing great defense right now uh, in, a, in a good rhythm. So that's kind of kind of in a good flow state right now, I guess you can say, and just making it happen. Matt, you're coming off a big game last week against Washington. I think it was like, I don't know, I how many tackles for loss, the fumble recovery, things like that. Um, just what is it for you this season that maybe – is there anything different like a different approach in your game or anything like that? Um, not really. I'm just feeling really good out there health-wise. Uh, my mind's right, playing fast. Everybody around me is playing fast as well. I think once the collective unit is really flying around, that's when, start, when, that's when plays start happening. Micah had his pick. Everybody's flying around. Somebody's in the way. Something gets tipped. You know, ball gets loose. That's what happens. So I'm just playing fast and trying to keep that going. How nice is it for you? Because, you know, I know that you've dealt with a lot of, you know, injuries in your career so far, but to have that all behind you and to be 100% healthy to start this season, just how how big is that? And how, how do you feel physically? Yeah, it feels great. Um, trying to keep it going the rest of the season. Did you do anything different in the off season to prepare your body? Do you do anything during the week um, to help prevent potential injuries? Um, not really. I mean, it's happen. It's a violent game, fast game, and sometimes uh, things get hurt or things break. So it is what it is. I'm just taking each day one by one and uh, trying to get better each day. New year, new Matt. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, we know we've known for a long time what, what Lionel can do for this football team, and he has been doing it a long time for this football team. So um, it's nothing new to us. I just think that he is. Uh, what is this year five? Year five, and and you know, just. Um, out there making plays and, and, and playing fast. Mikey, once, I think it was a couple weeks ago, you said like turnovers, big plays, they happen in bunches. And for you guys, that's kind of happens now. But how do you keep that up? How do you make sure that that's something that this defense is able to do every week? Uh, keep preaching it in practice. Keep preaching it um, film study. Once we get out on the practice field, fly around, make plays. And, and same thing on the on the uh, game film or game field. Uh, you know, you're out there, um, you know, giving high effort. Um, working on your fundamentals, and at the end of the day, whenever the, your opportunity comes, ball's in the air, you got to catch it, or if you have the opportunity to punch the ball out, go for it too. So um, I just think it comes with, with everything that we do um, each and every day, talking about it. We preach it every day, so um, go out there and make it happen. Um, he's, a, he's a confident quarterback. He's stepping up in the pocket. He's got guys flying around him, uh, yeah, and he's got a great arm, so... He can throw a good ball and uh, got to be ready for it. Yeah, definitely. I was gonna say he throws a good ball. Um, you know, I think any time in this league you can get you can get pressure on the quarterback, which I tell you guys each and every week. Doesn't matter if it's a rookie or a veteran quarterback. That you know, defensively, I think you're gonna have a pretty good day. So that's always um, our objective going into a game. But you know, it's a young guy that you know hasn't seen a lot of of you know defenses. But you know, we're gonna go out there and just try to play our game and. Um, but I think at the end of the day, he's smart. He's, you know, he has a good arm, and, and we're going to have to, um, you know, play accordingly. When it comes to affecting opposing quarterbacks, I know Leslie, I think it was even earlier this week, he said, you know, don't get too caught up in the sack numbers because there's there's so many different ways to disrupt a quarterback. Even though the sack numbers weren't 
last week what it was against Miami. I guess like what like Michael, what's your take on that? Like the fact that you can you can get it done in so many different ways when it comes to disrupting opposing quarterbacks. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, we that's another thing we preach all the time is affecting the quarterback. Um, whether if it's if you're not if you're not hitting them or getting sacks then then, you know, possibly affecting his eyes, um, disguise wise, you know, pre snap. Um, and even post snap, trying to trying to affect his, affect his eyes, and also his feet, uh, make him get happy feet, make him step up in the pocket, make him step side to side. Um, there's other ways to affect the quarterback. Obviously, the sack numbers aren't always going to be there. Just like, you know, there's a lot of numbers in that that people focus on that are very skewed depending on how a game goes. But um, you know, I just think as as long as we go into the game affecting him one way or another, I think we're gonna come out and, and be and be fine. Mm. Down there against the Texans. Thanks for uh, bringing it up. <laughs> didn't, even, didn't even think about that. <laughs> I mean, Brian uh, Dayball the other day said it felt like a decade ago that that game was yeah. played, but it really, in a lot of ways, wasn't all that long ago. There's a big group of you here that went through that game. Um, how do you think you came away from that? Maybe as a group, what did you guys collectively take away from that going into the 2020 season? Um, just, you know, that game was there for the take and you guys didn't take it. Yeah, yeah. Maybe what did you learn from that game? Well, oh, I think we, um, oh, man. From that game, I just think each and every year, um, you kind of, when you, when you kind of lose that last game, obviously you're not, you know, when it's, when you're not winning a Super Bowl, it feels like a failure. Um, and so when you lose that last game, and I can even go back to 2017, uh, losing in the you know, first round, um, that was a learning process. 18, the whole season was a learning process. 19. Um, that was the that was the year, right? 19 against Houston. Um, you know, we felt like we, we had it rolling. We had a pretty good season. You know, we felt like we should have won, should have you know won that game, and then unfortunately we didn't. So coming into last year, um, I just think each and every year is a learning process. You 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 know you kind of hit rock bottom and you grow from it. Um, and each year we've done that, and that's why you know we feel like this year we've we can hopefully hopefully blossom from from all the stuff that we went through and. Um, but it's it's still a process. We got to continue to to remember those losses um, to to get us to where we need to go. Matt, if I could just maybe the same question for you. Do you have any recollections of kind of what you took away from that loss? Which I know, you know, like I said, Demico was probably a game like you guys in a lot of ways felt like you should have won. Yeah, I just gotta. I think I gotta make that last play of the game. <laughs> but after I got those corrections, I put that behind me and I moved on from it. Matt, we were talking to Terry the other day, and he said. I brought you up, and he started smiling. He's like, that's my boy. Uh, he said he just plays the game with so much <laughs> swagger, and I try to match that when I'm out there. What's your relationship like with Taryn? I mean, you've been with him for now the, the fourth season. Yeah. He's having such a big year. Nah, Taryn's a, Taryn's a great dude. He's basically a linebacker. Like, if you watch the film, he's playing in the same position I am, just on the other side. So me and him got a good connection. If the Will's playing good and the Nickel's playing good, you might, you're probably going to have a good day. So that's kind of our relationship there. Those two positions are, are key to the defense. Do you, ever, do you ever try to just get him to eat a little something before the game? <laughs> um, nah, he does his own thing. He's vibing out before the game. So I let him, I let him do his own thing. Matt, talk so much about continuity with this group and with this defense. How beneficial has that been for you, having the continuity not only with the coaching staff, but the guys around you on this defense? Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we're, this is our fifth year together now, most of us. So you you watch some stuff on tape, but in the game, there's stuff flying around everywhere. So just being able to make decisions on the move with guys you've been around, I think that helps us out a lot because you can't cover everything in practice, obviously. So when you get out there, you got to have guys who are smart enough to make those those game time adjustments. So for us, I think that's been a that's been a big thing. Sean McCoy now he's going to retire. I know you guys were both teammates with him what what do you remember of his time here with the bills he's uh, a great dude yeah great dude true uh, pro. yeah true pro was was always here uh getting people motivated for sure um getting himself motivated uh one of talk, the best to yeah do it. one of the best to ever do i mean i, I played shady when him. when he was in philly and i was in green bay and that dude was a problem like problem there's no not one person if there's a one-on-one -on -one tackle you wouldn't making it and the coaches knew that so you know watching film the next day after playing philly and you missed a tackle on on shady they didn't even care because you ain't supposed to make that tackle so um man one of the best to ever do it shout out to shady yeah much respect to him yeah and then to watch him and then play against him elsewhere and then 
to then be on the same team. What what was that dynamic like going from the outside in? Um, what was, one more time, what was the question? I mean, you watched him on TV, you played against him, and now you're on the same team. What was it like watching from the outside and then getting the first-hand look as an insider or a team? I mean, it was <laughs> kind of just what I said. You know, you were um, – kind of all what he was able to do um, playing against him and watching on TV and then um, what is, what is, what's his IG cut on a dime cut on a dime and the boy cuts on a dime like he really his name his name holds true like there, this dude is just cutting all over the field and it's like you know snow game he's cutting everyone else is slipping um, the old uh, when he was in Philly that snow game he was cutting all over the place everyone else is slipping so the, the name holds true his IG name holds true for sure cut on a dime 2-5 Mm, not very often, not very often. When you, when 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 you make a when you have a bad play on film, and the coach kind of just says, "Huh, eh, you know, he, it is what it is." That's it's not very often. It's probably happened to me a few times. Shady was one. Calvin Johnson was another. Um, you know, and I, to me, that's two Hall of Fame players right there. Well, not to me. You know, obviously, everyone agrees upon that.